Hi, good evening. Uh, welcome to the September 22nd uh, library board meeting. Um, I have one more member joining us who is having a little tech issue. Um, so uh, we are going to begin with public comment and we have one member of the public who's joined us this evening uh, for public comment. We're going to ask that you state your name and address for the record and um, we ask that public comment be kept to under five minutes. You have the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. My name is Carrie Coughlin and I reside at 7 Barrington Drive, Unit D. Um, I wanted to just call in tonight with a couple of comments regarding the library policies during the pandemic. Um, I certainly appreciate how difficult um, it's been, and I do appreciate that you are finally offering um, pickup hours in both the evenings and on Saturdays. Um, however, I do think it took you far too long um, to be able to offer those hours. I do work outside of town um, during the 10 to 2 um, pickup, as I'm sure many residents do. And so when they called me this summer to tell me that I had a book available, um, I continued to sort of, you know, express that that 10 to 2 pickup um, was really, you know, not, not accessible um, for me, and I'm sure not accessible for many others. Um, so while I do appreciate that you finally have the evenings and Saturdays, I do think you really need to consider um, the needs of the community. Um, there was nothing inherently safer about 10 to 2 than, than 4 to 8 p.m. Um, and the second policy is that I was very disappointed to uh, pick up my library book in an extremely large plastic bag. I think we all know how, how bad plastic bags are for um, the environment. And again, I didn't feel that having this large plastic bag um, made picking up my book um, any safer. Um, and I didn't see any specific guidelines um, from the CDC or the state that really indicated um, that plastic should be used. Um, so I just wanted to kind of pass along um, that feedback um, again, I do understand how difficult um, this has been, um, but I thought that you should hear from a resident that the library's hours um, this summer really um, didn't, you know, didn't work for me and probably many others in town. So thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other members of the public uh, who would uh, present for public comment? Um, Ms. Coslin, can you just, this is Lila Mandor, can you just please spell your name for me? Uh, sure. My last name is C-O-U-G-H-L-I-N, um, and first name is K-E-R-R-Y. Thank you. And any, any other correspondence, Brooke? Not okay. that I see online or from email. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? No. All right. Moving on. Um, approval of the July 28th um, minutes. Um, does, um, does everyone have a copy of the minutes? Brooke sent them? Yeah. Um, any, um, any discussion on the minutes? Any, any changes? I think did Mary, did Mary's phone die in the middle and that's why we went to six at the end? Yes. That's it. Okay. That was my one. And George, you're the um, vice chair now. Yeah. I think it's, so it said secretary at the end. It's a small thing. But I was acting, we're in, acting uh, secretary. as secretary and when the meeting started, I was secretary. So, <laughs> okay. Know, just like you were vice chair. When <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So are we making that change? No, then leave it be. Okay, leave it be. So there's no changes. No change, I'd say. All right, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I motion, Martha, it's Hannah. And, second. Uh, second? Amanda. I think we need to go around with a, uh, so I will say yes for the minutes. Lori? Yes. Amanda? Yes. Lila? <laughs> Dane, yeah, I saw it. Hannah? Yes. Uh, Terry? Yes. George? Yes. And Mary? Yeah. Great. Okay. Thanks, everybody. And who's second? Uh, who's second? I did. Yeah. Thank you, Amanda.
Um, I don't see Carolyn. Did we have, I didn't hear an update from Carolyn for the Friends of the Library. No, I have a quick update um, about a friend of the library <laughs> um, that uh, Nancy Kochko, um, a member of the Friends of the Weathershield Library, hosted a mask wearing socially distanced neighborhood book sale in her driveway. <laughs> um, so this was a, I believe she's a board member of the Friends, um, and uh, the Friends promoted it, um, but she got four hundred dollars in the weekend, and and the pro and all of that is going to the Friends of the Library, and so that's kind of the Friends update, um, and that they will not be having their fall book sale, obviously. So, um, but I think that's just like a little ray of sunshine in this world that we're all so desperately in need of. So I think that's, <laughs> that's just, great. I think that's wonderful. Thanks to them, that's great. Yeah. Um, okay, moving on. Um, Amy, do you have a um, update from council for us? Sure, we've, we've had um, three meetings since the last time the library board met. Um, we did do the end of year transfers. Uh, the library had some funds that were part of those transfers. Uh, at that meeting, we also had some maintenance type issues of proving grant, uh, grant approvals, a boiler repair at Highcrest, a replacement at Highcrest. Um, at the next meeting, um, we discussed the Weathersfield Stands Against Racism resolution. That was a lengthy conversation with a lot of um, input by residents. Um, the resolution did pass. Uh, some amendments were made that did not pass. So the original um, uh, resolution passed. We also approved the replacement of the firehouse roof. Um, and that's the one on Main Street. So that had to go through the Historic District Commission. And it has to have, you know, shingles that are appropriate for the Historic District. And then at this last meeting, it was a um, we had some fall paving um, bids to present and Brooke and Martha came and presented um, about the library reopening. So I appreciate you coming to the meeting and, and not only speaking to the town council members, but at a council meeting, you have a wider audience. So you do reach some folks at home. Um, and now that it's, you know, meetings are on YouTube and um, via our television providers, you do get a, a little bit of a wider audience. So I'm glad you came and spoke out about um, the updates, especially the um, additional hours. So I thought that was very good. Anyone have any questions for Amy? Okay, okay. thank you. Um, for the chair's report, um, I just wanted to thank Amy and ask you to extend our thanks to Mayor Rell for having us um, last night and, and to the rest of the council. Um, and we, uh, I know Brooke is gonna give an update that she shared with uh, town council last night, so I won't, um, I won't repeat what she has to say, but I will share that both Mayor Rell and, um, and the town manager had some very nice things to say about um, the job that Brooke and the staff have done in managing through a very difficult time. And we're very appreciative of um, I also have to give a shout out to, and I know Brooke is probably going to do this too, but a shout out to physical services for the amazing job that they have done um, in putting in the plexiglass and especially Pete the carpenter. Um, he is, uh, he, it's unbelievable. It looks beautiful, honestly, what they've done um, to the point where you might almost think like it was part of the, the design of the library. It is, it is so, um, it, it just has, it, it is, one of our goals is obviously always creating a welcoming environment and it continues to be a very welcoming environment even with the plexiglass there so kudos um, on that um, i just i will say i appreciate um the the uh, member of the public who spoke this evening um we understand these have been difficult times um and you know there is no playbook for how we would go through this um and so I appreciate that, that um, the schedule as it is rolled out and we are expanding it and, and looking to make it as accessible as we can. Um, I also very much appreciate where the library staff and Brooke have gone above and beyond. Um, I know, for instance, in making personal deliveries of books when showers are not necessarily at home. Martha, um, you're 
Can, Can you hear me? As well, yeah. You got me? Yeah. Okay. No, I was saying that I appreciate the work that you've done um, in trying to accommodate folks who, you know, as wherever possible. So thanks very much for that. Um, in terms of business, um, we have, did everyone get a copy of the, the hour, uh, the meeting dates for 2021? Um, we're going to, we're going to need a vote on that. Um, there, there is no location indicated to be, de to be determined, um, hopefully in person. Um, and, um, as always, we hold that we're, it's the same schedule as we always keep fourth Tuesday of the month. Um, and then, um, no meeting in November with the, or with the earlier meeting in December. So as to kind of avoid holidays, um, do I have a motion to accept the proposed library board schedule for 2021? Move to accept. Seconded. Second. Any discussion? Any questions? I move seconded. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay. All in favor will go around again. I'll just, uh, I'm going to go by my screen. I'm a, a, a yes. Uh, Lori? Yes. Yeah, Amanda? Yes. Uh, Lila? Yes. Anna? Yes. Gary? Yes. George? And Mary? Yes. Great, okay. Um, at the last meeting, we also talked about, especially considering um, the, um, the changes in the way that we're, we're meeting the public in a lot of ways, um, having an outreach committee meeting. Um, we haven't had one in a little while. And so setting up an outreach committee meeting so that we can discuss, you know, how we can um, make the library and make ourselves more accessible to anything that we can do um, in terms of reaching out to the public. Um, we were looking at October for a date, but I'm gonna throw out October 21st as a date. Everyone, you know, all are welcome, but we'll specifically be looking. It's Wednesday, October 21st. Um, we probably could do as early as six o'clock if, if anyone, people want to. Martha, yeah. I'm on that committee. Um, I, I, I can't after five o'clock on Wednesday. After five o'clock. I could yeah, do just, early. But it, that, that's the, I could do the following Wednesday. I just, um, I have a commitment that was when, that Wednesday. No, no, that's fine. Um, I'm looking at, I mean. else? I mean, could we do earlier? Brooke, what do you think? I can. I mean, I could do, um, I'd have to almost do like 3.30 if it was four or five o'clock. Is anyone who's saying, who would care to join? Because then we, or we can go evening late another day. Hannah, what does Thursday look like for you that week? Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that's fine. I mean, Thursday's fine. Oh, no, you know what? I think Thursday is fine. Sorry. Uh, oh, I could do the 22nd. You want to do Thursday? Can you do six on Thursday? It's fine. It's great. That work? Yeah, I think it's All just right. you, and, you and I, right? Are we the old timers on outreach? Does anyone else want to come to outreach? <laughs> Ready, super duper fun. We're going to do some. We're, we're going to do some. <laughs> Well, maybe we should just have it at three thirty. On no, no. Let's go with six o'clock on. Let's you know what? six o'clock on on Thursday, so it's a little more accessible for folks. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. The twenty second Thursday. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. And then um, for then we also need to have a governance committee meeting to start to look at some policies. Um, and uh, we were looking at the week of. November 16th for that. Um, again, looking around six o'clock, I was going to throw out the 18th, which is the Wednesday of that week. This will be kind of a new meeting, a new thing. So we'll be recruiting a few different people for this, but uh, we can get into, we love talking policy, I know. Um, so we just, let's pencil that in. If we need to make an adjustment, it's a little far out. If as we get closer, we need to adjust, why don't we? So let's pencil in uh, the 18th for the governance meeting, November 18th. What time? We'll do, let's do 6 p.m. if that works. Okay. All right, 
that's all I have. Um, Brooke? Okay. Um, let's do the, uh, the finance portion. Uh, you should have received a copy of um, the financial report and how it was reflected in Munis as of last Thursday, Friday, <laughs> um, the 18th. Um, and we are 29% uh, spent out at this point. And there's a few things that drive it. So, you know, it's like the first quarter here. Um, it's a little high. And the reason for that is because um, uh, the pension got tapped in Munis immediately, if that makes sense. Like it was deposited in theory, on July 1st, July 2nd, it's gone. <laughs> so it's just spent, instead of doing it like by 1 12th or every pay period, um, it's just gone right away. Um, often that's done with health insurance and that doesn't seem to be the case at the moment, um, but Mike O'Neill is an audit uh, at this time. So I suspect at some point he's just gonna yank that back. So that's kind of what happens. Um, and so that, is a big driver. Um, and another one is when you go down to tech uh, support services, um, and, and I've mentioned this in previous years, uh, that the previous director really tried to get a bunch of these um, one-year contracts that we have with these single source <laughs> entities for our RFID or or data, usually in this case, in tech support, it's databases, um, everything aligned with the fiscal year. So there is an, a lot of outlay of money in this first quarter for us. Um, and so, you know, we're paying our consortium nearly 40,000 at the, you know, July 1st. Um, and so that's included in this budget. So um, that that's a big one that comes out. And then if you go down to, um, office machinery services is um, our RFID. And so that's immediately due, um, you know, July 1st, basically. And so that's immediately paid out, you know. So those are the kind of things that really um, drive this first quarter is the outlay of, of so much. Um, so that's kind of this. Does anybody have any questions about this specific um, report? what's yeah okay um and then just so that you're all aware we did um at the last meeting you voted to have uh 15 000 from showman withdrawn um and to be deposited uh with the town um and martha and i signed off on that um and that took place at the end of august um, so that did transpire, that has happened, and the money is sitting uh, with the town. Um, the, and then you can see the latest August 31st um, report on that, um, and you can see the debit of 15,000, at least in the showman um, account. And the other one looks like it's ticked up a few thousand dollars in, in this, you know, in change in value of investments. Um, has gone up. So the library account has gone up a little bit. Um, so those are the uh, Charles Schwab. And I think by the end of the year, Martha, just to put it in everybody's, you know, we probably should have another finance committee meeting um, at some point before the end of December. Yeah, um, because we'll be starting a budget prep process. We'll start. So it'll be a good time to look at the books at the end of the, at the, end of the year. So. Um, the, I, I just had said that um, Mike O'Neill, um, the town audit is coming up um, to wrap up the previous fiscal year. Um, we do provide a little tiny bit of our statistical data um, for that, and we'll be working on that in the next few days. Um, and that's the first um, key piece. And then we start to work on the statistics for the state library report, which is quite a behemoth undertaking um, all credit to Celia. Um, Allison, one of the managers here, it's just it's just a big thing. And so that, by the time we're in the next meeting, that's all that she'll be focused on in short, right around the time of, of, of the actual meeting, I'll be uh, definitely more involved 
um, and that's due in, in the middle of November um, every year. So that's uh, gathering all that data and making sure it's accurate is, is, is important. The phased reopening uh, continues. On Monday, August 3rd, since our last meeting, um, the library started offering holds pickup by appointment, uh, computer use by appointment, as well as fax use and copier use. Um, Saturday service began on August 8th. And on this first Saturday, the library miraculously <laughs> served as the town's charging station. And I say that miraculously because I'm not sure if everyone is aware, but the library is not hooked up to the town hall generator. And the library was with, without power for about two and a half days. We did finally, we were out Friday, right before the storm hit, we lost power. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, on the, I believe it was Tuesday. Um, we were without power and I was getting ready to send staff home because we were in the dark. And then everyone's, as we're getting our stuff, our cell phones all blow up with get to shelter and we immediately head down to the basement. It's also the place with the least amount of windows that aren't near, near us that we can go down there. Uh, town hall staff actually went into the town hall chambers um, and, is where, and then some people I think were in the basement of town hall as well. Um, and we were down there for a good hour. Um, and then we were released uh, to go. Um, and so I did, um, would check in with town hall. Um, and then we remained without power. Town hall was on, the generator kicks on. Um, and so that was about 4, 4.30 or something that we got out of here. Um, and then we didn't have power. So the next, we had like partial, I want to say like the 10 or 20%. So not all of our power went down, but we're at 10 or 20%. So I did have staff come in on Wednesday and we did work for um, a couple of hours, I believe. And we did what we could safely accomplish without much light and, and no electricity basically. And so, um, and then the next, so then I had to send people home and we did have some of the non-union not even report in. Then the next day we had no power. <laughs> like it got, if it could have gotten worse, it actually did. Um, and we were down to zero power. Um, and so we didn't have any staff report in. And then uh, by Friday we were, we were back up. Um, and so it was, you know, that was, I, I was amazed that on Saturday, um, I had, Kathy Bagley and I had um, spoken and so that she didn't have to bring staff in on the weekends at their overtime rate or whatever, they're paying extra for, for staff to come in to man the community center as the charging station. We knew that we could easily do it if I had power, <laughs> it's not a problem. Um, and it's an easy thing that we, we can do. Um, that you don't have to manage a whole nother location. And so we were able to do that. Um, the public did come in and did utilize that. One gentleman walked in with a, a whole series of equipment and we were like, you're all set up, but you have to just stay at this table and be socially distant. Um, so that did work out. So we were very pleased to be able to provide um, that service on that day. Um, but again, it is, it is with regret. And I know it's just a significant cost, um, but Again, it is a frustration that we, we're not hooked up to the generator because we're basically out of service if we, if we don't have power. Um, uh, starting on Tuesday, September 8th, the library began to offer browsing um, where people could actually come in and check out their, more, their own material and we didn't pull it for them. Um, however, the total number of people, which includes staff um, permitted inside the facility has been severely restricted. Um, so we do keep that number as, um, as, as low as possible, but um, so far it's, it's, it's been okay um, in trying to maintain. And, you know, they're online, there's all these COVID capacity calculators and you put in your square footage, but some of them account for furniture, some of them don't, you know, and I think that we just, what we kind of came up with manually is, is is actually, I mean, it's, it's, 
it's just as good, <laughs> you know, we're like, oh, if you walk around here and the health district, uh, Charles Brown, when he walked the facility with me, he was like, you cannot think in terms of square footage, you have to think in terms of zones, because if we think of the teen space, which is basically 525 square feet, how many can you fit in there? <laughs> and really, it's like comfortably, uh, you know, six feet apart with all the furniture that's in there. And keep in mind, I removed a lot of furniture. It's like five or six feet, uh, like that's it. Um, and it's shocking, but it, you know, we have a lot of round furniture. So that, you know, um, so it's just, it's just interesting uh, that. And, and then I'm, I'm trying to circle back with the um, fire marshal's office, you know, just to know what are my upper limits that I could go to, you know, kind. So there's that. Um, on Monday, September 4th, the library increased the number of public hours by offering evening hours on Monday and Tuesdays. Um, and those hours are 5 to 9 p.m. Um, and the midday cleaning for Monday and Tuesday occurs between 2 and 5. Um, and we have someone who's coming in, hitting all the bathrooms, and then the staff go around and wipe down all the surface, a bunch of the surfaces that we have. The, the self-check machine, the elevator buttons, um, so the Xerox machine, um, which gets a lot of use. Um, so those are the kinds of things that we're doing in that time. I would like to shorten that time up a little bit, and instead of maybe two to five, it's two to four, and then open at four o'clock. Um, in theory, we could go the other way and do 10 to 3, um, but again, the middle school dynamic is a huge, huge concern, um, and so we'll just kind of see, but we do want to, like, start to creep up and increase our hours a bit, so we'll see. Um, the vast majority of the PEAT plexiglass project <laughs> has been installed. Um, a couple of smaller plexiglass projects are also being worked on that would enable us to increase the number of computers that we have available. Um, and so that people aren't, even though they're six feet apart, they're not directly across from each other, which is the case with the children's and the um, teen computers specifically. Um, and we could add additional workstation at each one of those. So um, physical, Pete is working on, on those. So we do look forward to that because that would just increase our capacity um, because we are using the workstations um, as, as, as much as we can. Um, it is anticipated that by October, we will also begin to offer the use of our study rooms. I'm in one right now, um, as well as our study carols, which we have relocated up to the mezzanine level. Um, and that we can safely have people utilize, utilize those spaces. Um, and I think uh, there was one study carol which we positioned by a, a support beam and it didn't have electricity. We had an electricity installed so that obviously people can plug in their devices. Um, and so we do think that that's uh, kind of one of the more needed things is can I come in, you know, for an hour or two and study? Um, and these aren't from the high school and middle school students. These are adults who are coming and maybe just to get into a different environment than their home. I don't, I don't know. Um, but they are looking for that and we're looking to offer that and we, in, in October, we'll be looking to, to do that. Um, and then we're also looking to do it um, at some point in October, additional evening hours, which would be our Thursday nights, um, five to nine. Um, and then to expand um, the Saturday to, Saturday hours from 10 to 2 to um, 10 to 5. We don't, and it's hard to say, but we have um, a little less traffic on Saturday afternoons typically um, and in a normal situation. Um, and we feel like maybe we don't need that midday cleaning on Saturday because the traffic's a little bit of a different dynamic on, on Saturday. So is that something that we can successfully um, pull off and, and, and you know, in, increase our hours? Um, and again, we, we still do not anticipate offering any in-person programs or meetings until 2021. Um, and the first uh, group that will be permitted in will be the library board. Um, so um, that's, yes, it's you. Um, and so that's, uh, you know, that's, that's that. Um, it is our sincere hope 
that we do not have to pull back from any of these additional stats. And it's important to keep in mind that um, I was in consultation with many, many, many different entities um, that were providing information or guidance. Um, and it, you know, and that's a lot of information to process. Um, and I'm really grateful to the Central Connecticut Health District for their guidance. Um, and they really strongly suggested that we have a slow reopening, that it's very phased. Um, we are very um, similar. We, we, the directors of, that are within the Central Connecticut Health District, which includes Newington, Rocky Hill, Berlin, and ourselves, um, would meet you know, every few weeks and check in to see what are you offering, um, how, you know, what is your next step, so that we were kind of close um, because we do share uh, patrons, especially Rocky Hill and Newington, we really do share patrons. Um, and we're at this point, we're pretty similar to, I would say, uh, Berlin and Rocky Hill. Uh, Newington has not opened their doors yet. Um, and Newington is still doing curbside. Um, and I don't know when they, they are planning to open their doors, um, but everybody's got different physical layouts, different concerns. Um, and so, you know, uh, th there's that. And Glastonbury is also very similar to what we are doing as well. So um, I'm quite pleased with how we're doing so far. Um, and all of this has been, um, and I, I do realize that it has, um, has not made everyone happy um, and has not been quick enough for some people. Um, but the, the ultimate goal has always been the safety of our library patrons and our staff while they are within this facility. Um, and that has been the, the biggest, um, the, big, the most important thing that I've, I've had to um, focus on. So, um, you know, there's that. The, uh, the staff are still hanging in there. They're being resilient as ever and uh, adjusting to the new reality. Uh, uh, the staff are very customer service oriented. We're used to engaging our patrons and we feel like it's very difficult to do this uh, behind plexiglass and not be up close and try not to have extended conversations. Um, and it's, it's difficult, um, but you know, we're all, we're all adjusting. Um, if you recall, approximately 16 of the non-union part-time staff had been officially furloughed. Um, as of today, we have brought back 11 of them. For the most part, they are at reduced hours. So where they might have been working 15 a week, they may be working eight. Um, and we continue to slowly transition um, the remaining back in as needed. Um, and so there's, uh, I know that I'm bringing back uh, one more in October um, and it will just happen as, as we kind of move forward as we open up an additional evening or expand hours. Um, so there's that. Um, in the meantime, we are encouraging the staff to get their flu shot as we would the entire Weathersville community. The Central Connecticut Health District provides them. And if I can just do a public information push, go get your flu shot if you're able. Um, very, very important. Um, and then we're also making sure that the staff are taking, or during this time, we've, uh, we've finished almost everybody, but we're trying to make sure that the staff take all that required sexual harassment training um, that we're mandated to provide. So um, we're trying to get that uh, taken care of as well. Um, any questions about the reopening and the phase in at all? Rook, have we had to limit the numbers at any point? I mean, not allow people in? No, not yet, not yet. And most libraries um, have reported that like they would initially get a kind of a rush the first couple days yeah. and then it just kind of, no, I think people are genuinely just frightened to go out and about and understandably so. Um, and I know that 
Um, the, some of the guidelines given is that visitors, you know, your library patrons over the age of 65, you know, may not want to go out and about. <laughs> it's not the best thing. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's tough. And, and we can provide, um, when, when we need to, home delivery. Um, in some cases, we've mailed items to people. Um, in other cases, we've made arrangements for their family or friends to pick up materials. Um, but most, the people really like the grab, uh, the, that they can pick up their stuff and leave the building right away that it's already checked out to them. And so that will continue. So the fact that we're able to offer them both options that they can, can come further into the facility than just grab their grab the checked out items, um, or do the do the other is you know that people have options and their comfort level. So uh, most people are not hanging out for extended periods of time, um, and very few people are bringing their kids in. Um, we feel that the place has never been cleaner. And it's a great time to visit your library. Um, but, you know, people have got to kind of get used to this uh, new dynamic. Um, but we don't, we definitely don't want to pull back. And um, I'm hoping we don't uh, limit if, you know, that we don't get so much traffic that we have to limit. So. I was going to say, I came, um, as you know, I came the other morning to get a book um, that was on hold that I had been anticipating for months, um, so I was so excited. But to walk into the library and just see how beautiful it, it looks. Obviously, the, the safety precautions are there, but to see your staff and everybody smiling and happy, you know. Actually, I walked in and I think Monica was ready to give me my book and like, you know, and I was like, okay, but I wanna say hi to Brooke for a sec. So it was nice to sort of have that sense of community, even if it was only five minutes. Yeah. But I think, you know, for some of our public, just to walk through the doors, um, I know I'll personally say as a side, um, I actually, you know, was talking to a group of friends on text that afternoon, and many of them did not know the library was back open to even do sort of requesting books and picking up your holds. Um, so I thought that was a, another thing, just, you know, for all of us as a, as a piece, as a library board, just to share that with our friends and our family in town. And I know we all have, but to remind them that it, that it is open and there are expanded hours if they want to come and browse. But just, I just want to say publicly a big kudos, Brooke, to you and to your team for kind of hanging in there during all this and then, you know, reopening slowly and safely for the public. Thank you. Um... Anything else about the reopening? Um, summer reading is wrapped up. Um, obviously, it's not going to be a banner year with the numbers um, that still need to be crunched. Um, but we believe it was a welcome distraction for the community. And um, while I realized there were a lot of um, lawn signs this summer, um, Amy Bello, um, <laughs> <laughs> that all look wonderful. Um, the dragon for summer reading, in my personal <laughs> and professional opinion, just was the real winner. And so, <laughs> um, but yeah, in love with the dragon and we bought them so that we could also use them uh, for next year that we didn't put a year on it because we knew people couldn't. So the dragon will reappear um, next year as well. So we're, we're quite pleased, we're quite pleased with that. Um, the artwork is just fabulous. And, um, and I, I do think it was a welcome distraction. So pleased with summer reading. Um, we do have um, some other programming that uh, it just happened or is coming up adult programming. Uh, I believe it was last night, they just hosted a virtual modern calligraphy program. Um, it went, it was very, very well received. Um, I know Doreen was blowing up my phone because she participated in it. She really had a great time. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that's just wonderful. Um, the teen program, the teen librarian actually believes there aren't teens in town. Poor Sarah Briggs. <laughs> she just is like, you claim they're here, they're not, I don't see them. Um, but she's been doing virtual programs. The last one was Doodle Art. Um, the next one is uh, do-it-yourself Tetris-inspired magnets. Um, she did something with Pop-Tarts. They tasted delicious. Um, 
and, and just hosting the program. She sends the link. Um, we're not doing live programs uh, with uh, children or teens. Um, we send them the link to the actual video. Um, and because these are recorded, we can reuse them um, if we know that, you know, more interest and they didn't get a chance to participate, we actually can continue the program um, moving forward. Um, many of you have seen the Facebook, uh, the Nutmeg Reads by Ellen or Sarah or some of our other staff um, and Brie with her story time. So that's what's been going on in the summer. Um, and now in the fall for children specifically as they've got their adventures around the world um, and they're going to virtually learn about uh, different countries and cultures and food and music and famous landmarks um, with crafts, activities, and challenges. Um, and each week they'll post about a different country and everybody's going to get a travel bag and a passport. Um, and so they have uh, ages, right now they've registered ages 3 to 12. Um, which is just great. So just, you know, another way to kind of do it. It's not, you know, a weekly kind of thing. Um, and it's just the staff um, getting creative of, of how to deliver this. Um, if you looked online, maybe you received the email. Um, one of our staff members, uh, Stephanie Grisner, um, she uh, put together and did the research on uh, our, our slide, our virtual slideshow on um, celebrating women's suffrage. Um, it's right, a link on the website. It's fabulous, and we fact-checked it to death. Um, and so to make sure, because we don't like to put up anything that isn't factual um, here at the library, but if you haven't had a chance to um, check it out, please do. Um, we are very excited about an upcoming opportunity. Um, I mean, this is right up there with, for me professionally, this is right up there with like a book challenge or a subpoena for patron records, national security. This is a good one, is that we are actually going to help our elections office. I mean, this is how strongly I feel. I'm like, I'm very excited. Um, libraries, uh, like an informed citizenry is the bedrock of a democracy. And so libraries, we believe we play a very, very important role in that. And, um, part of our, uh, the library strategic plan um, is one of the, the, one of the strategic goals is, in, be, uh, you know, be an informed citizen, you know, kind of thing. So this to me is just awesome that um, the elections office reached out, can we utilize your space to help? I don't even know what for, I think it's counting absentee ballots. I don't know what it is. But I am like thrilled to death. Now, there's some public libraries in the country that serve as polling places. That would be for me just like maybe that's 2024 for me. I don't know. So, but this, like, I get very, very excited about this that they're going to utilize our facility and lit all the furniture that we have. I have to close down children's for a few days, but we're going to pull all the furniture that we've stored in the community room where we can't have meetings. They're going to put some machines in. Everybody has to be socially distant. But the fact that we are able to do that um, and maintain social distancing because they can't do that in some other function in the town hall chambers, um, I'm just like thrilled. I, and it sounds silly, but I am just literally thrilled to pe pieces that we can help elections in this way and, can, and help with democracy. I get that's I'm, awesome. I'm just excited about it. And you know, and I'm sure it's something they just feed the machine and that's it. I'm not really sure, but I'm just like over the moon. I was like, please pick me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole process in addition to feeding the machines. You got to, yes. you know, open the ballots, you lay them down, you do all sorts of stuff. So yeah. we need the space. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just, I'm excited. So um, yeah, because normally all I get to say is vote. Like I have to be completely neutral, but I can be excited that the process is going on in my, at least a small piece of the process is going on in, in, in this facility. So um, I don't, I don't think it's going to be a small piece this year. They're talking like maybe 10,000 absentee ballots, more people voting absentee than at the polls, Brooke. You're like, what's going to happen in the library is going to be like, well, children's will be shut down. <laughs> We're doing the great go yet. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, very exciting. Um, 
uh, an unprecedented year, needless to say. Um, physically, the physical structure, in addition to the plexiglass, is, and these are very small, minor things, we actually had a doorbell installed <laughs> for our back door. Um, because we get a lot of, a ton of deliveries and we never know that humans are there. Um, so we're, we're excited that that's been installed and actually is our vendors and uh, delivery guys are very happy as well. Um, and our back door actually got uh, painted green. So it was like maroon um, and there was a pole out there that was green as well. And, it, and I was like, why are we all maroon and the other isn't and um and so i was like the shoes need to match the belt need to match the purse let's match the town hall chamber doors and gary was fine with it so they did paint it it looks actually really good and if we can just get that bike rack painted um would be great and paint that green and it'll be very very looking good um and uh many thanks to the men's garden club who came this weekend and really did a, a, a great job in cleaning up the rose garden. Um, and so I think uh, they weren't able to get it to it as soon as they wanted to, but um, th they did it over this weekend and it just looks like a thousand times uh, better. So many thanks to them for uh, keeping the entire complex looking good. Um, we did um, a couple of IT things. Um, our constant contact, whenever I'm often asked to send out messages and I need to be careful what we do share out to um, the library patrons who signed up, um, but we do share um, important messages out um, through our constant contact. And I've been saying for quite some time um, that we have 4,000 um, people who are subscribed and that's one of the biggest in town. Well, it turns out um, that's not true. It's 4,920. And when I hit the 5,000 mark, the cost of this service is going to go up. Um, <laughs> so we're trying to make sure that the unsubscribed aren't being counted and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so, but uh, that's, it's actually almost 5,000 our reach, which is just, it's fabulous. So um, we're, we're pleased that we have that service. So I actually learned that this morning. I was like, I keep saying 4,000 and they were like, you're wrong. <laughs> it's 4,900. Um, so it's great. Um, we're starting, uh, we are in the process of updating um, a lot of our computers to Windows 10. Um, so we've been doing that. The computers that are for the public use right now that we, that we have available for the public to use, those have already been updated. Um, we recently purchased a new uh, universal power supply um, that just provides backup power so that when we do lose electricity, and it does happen, and I don't think that's going to end anytime soon, um, that the server, all that stuff can shut down more gently than just the hard knockoff. Um, so we did purchase a new one because um, the older one was kind of um, not reacting quite the way we wanted it to. Um, and we are starting um, to look at, we received money, thankfully, um, in the budget. So thank you to um, town council um, that we're starting to uh, look at the, for our cap, we received about $8,000 for a capital improvement project, which is very small, but it's for our RFID, our self-check machines, and they need to be updated to Windows uh, 10. Um, and so that upgrade, is um, gonna take place with those two machines. And there's, it looks like there's some other equipment involved. And I'm really grateful that we're able to do that through capital money um, versus um, out of the operating budget. And it is a very small um, line item, but we're looking to get that started so that our uh, self-check machines can keep working because right now they're on Windows Vista. <laughs> Remember oh, that? Huh. Yeah, so it's time to move those forward. Um, so I am, I am grateful that we're a very tiny project this year. So, um, that's great. And we hope to get that wrapped up this sometime this year. So it'd be great. So, um, any questions about any of that? So that's what I have for the director's report. Great. Brooke, you gave me a flashback of when we were redoing, when they were renovating the library 
that there we, they really couldn't do programs back then. And we all muddled through. It was unfortunate. It was 15 years ago. So maybe every 15 years we get a little hiccup, like who knows, maybe we're due for a longer pass. But uh, I don't think my kids would remember that. I think they just would remember all the great programs you did have. So we'll get through this. So um, I, un I, I m muted Mary and I can't unmute her because she was giving feedback. Is it, Mary, can you unmute yourself? You have to press the button. I apologize, Mary. And I'm afraid I, I don't want her to, I asked her to unmute. Are you able to unmute her, Brooke, on your end? I am not. I think if she's on a phone, try star six. Sorry, Mary. Try star six. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Mary, I really apologize. Did you have a question for Brooke? I didn't, no. Okay, good. Sorry about that. It was he, he kept flashing up and I was getting something. And you mm. usually can. Sorry about that. And thank um, you, Amy, for that tip on star six. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> 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 Unmute on phone. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, we uh, are going to do an executive session. Um, so we're going to, um, uh, we'll have a, a motion for that, but uh, anything else for Brooke, you're all set then. Otherwise we'll have you and we'll stop recording in a second. So we need a, um, we need a motion to go into executive session. I motion to go into executive ah. session. Hannah. Hannah second. Anyone a sec second, <laughs> Lori? Okay. okay. So, so I'm going to stop the recording now. And I will say 